Good evening and welcome to the April meeting of the Penfield Public Library Board of Trustees. We have a quorum tonight. All our members are here, as is our director and our town board member. And we have a guest from the library staff who's with us also. And um, we will get started. Let me call the meeting to order. Um, welcome, everyone. And I hope that people at home are watching also. Uh, the first item on our agenda is approval of the minutes. Did everyone have a chance to read the minutes? Were there any changes? If not, do we have a move to approve? Thank you. Megan has moved. Is there a second? Thank you, Jen. All in favor, raise your hand. OK. The minutes are approved. And now, um, Niraj, would you like to walk us through the financial reports? Sure. Thanks a lot, Barbara. Um, I'm going to start with the budget summary. I think that's a good place to start. Um, over here, a lot of things, the one thing you need to keep in mind, this is the April budget summary. Three months have really been in the budget. So a good threshold is 25% on the right-hand side. Revenues haven't come in yet, so it's hard to look at it and make a judgment on it. Expenses, if you look at the total expenses, um, it's at 23% compared to our um, threshold or our standard right now is 25, so that's good. And it's even better right now by about a couple points. What I'd like to look at are the controllable expenses. So um, the wages, salary line, that's coming in in line with um, our budget, um, it's 23%, that's 2% better. Materials, um, that's that's about 5% better, so that's significantly better um, at 19%. Um, the last area is contractual, that's huge. Um, that's We're only at 8.3% spent so far. And I looked into it and I saw that there was uh, $56,000 of automation that's been budgeted that hasn't been used. So maybe that's part of it. Um, the last areas are the benefits. So we don't have as much control on that, like social security and insurance. So uh, the other area that we might want to look at um, is the balance sheet and the gift and memorial fund. That all looks all right uh, right now. We're above the $140,000 minimum balance for the gift and memorial funds. So that's a good thing to see. Um, I'm going over to the total assets right now, the gift and memorial fund, Family First in Canandaigua. We have about $163,000. Um, that's just what the balance is. Flipping through the statements, I get to Family First and this past month uh, we renewed one of the CDs, um, a $45,000 CD. Um, we renewed it at like nine months, so it's gonna mature uh, the day after Christmas. So we can remember that. Um, so then I'm just flipping through. I signed a check for half the deposit, um, the deposit actually, the half the cost of the sign. So that's already been paid for. Um, that's pretty much it on um, the financials, it looked like. So any questions? Naraj, before you write any more checks, and I know there is a bill for the sign, um, the balance in the checking account was down to about $30. So you'll need okay. to move the money over to cover that. OK, so we're, um, I'll move it from the other bank. Other liquid. Yeah, the liquid account, the money money market account. Okay, then we'll do that. You should have plenty of money in there to be able to okay. move it over. Okay. We're going to do this separately. I'd like to um, have a motion to approve um, the financial report. Yeah. Denise, thank you. And Brett, I'm going to take that as a second. 
Thank you. Um, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the financial report that Naraj gave. All in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you very much. And we do have, we all have, we, I hope everyone has seen the sign. I think it looks really, really wonderful. And thank you to the Strategic Planning Committee for sticking with this. And I know Melissa, who designed the sign, really, it looks, it looks just great the way you laid it out and so forth. So I think everybody who sees it, and I heard earlier tonight that there's even talk on some of the fa local Facebook sites about how wonderful the new sign looks. And I think that's great when we can generate that kind of positive comment. Um, I do have the bill here, Naraj, for the other half of the payment. And what we need is a vote to approve payment of this. And um, after this is approved, Naraj, the check is written out. You just need to sign it and send it off. So how much um, money should we put in the checking? Like right now, there's twenty four thousand in the money builders account. I can move like five thousand. I would move ten. Ten, okay. I don't know. I, I maybe I read my finances differently. I just always want to be prepared for something that could be coming up. I agree. I agree. I don't think we're earning much anyway, so ten is cool. Exactly. So. It's been moved and seconded, has it? Did we, did, we, did we move to approve this bill? I don't think we did, yeah. Okay, do I have a motion? Thank you. And there, Judy will second. Um, make it move, Judy seconded. All in favor of approving the second half of the side bill, raise your hand. Thank you very much. That is passed and um, that was really nice to see. Um, we have a guest here this evening, but before we do, I'm going to flip the order of these. Under communications, we hardly ever have anything that comes into us, but this month we have two cards. One is from Gail McKay and one is from Judy Carpenter, thanking us for our gifts, the flowers and the gift cards that we gave them on their retirements. And I will pass them around this evening here, and then I will drop them off at the library and put them in the trustees' mailbox so everyone gets a chance to read them because they're really very, very thoughtful and kind messages. So I'd like to share that with everyone. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce Lila Grills, who is going to talk about two things. First, she's going to talk about as the young adult librarian, her role at the Penfield Public Library, and with the Monroe County Library, she is also in charge of the diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. Okay, well, can everyone hear me? Yes. Thank you, Barbara, and everyone else for having me tonight. Um, my name is Lila Grills. I've been the young adult librarian at the library since August of 2004. And um, a lot of my job um, is purchasing materials for the YA young adult collection. So I have to um, read reviews and um, try to create a balanced collection for, for fiction, nonfiction, graphic novels, video games. You know, I do that by keeping up with um, the periodicals. Also, I love to get suggestions from teens and teachers and parents. Um, maintaining and promoting the collection is big. You know, we have to um, weed out things for space. Um, we have to try, try to figure out how to market the materials by creating book displays and lists. Um, during the pandemic, I created book bundles where I put five titles um, in different genres all ready to go for curbside or for a parent to come in and pick out, you know, a, a book bundle on, um, you know, fantasy or a book bundle on graphic novels. Um, 
a lot of what I do is advocating for teens in the library, uh, middle and high schoolers. And um, I try to provide them with a lot of opportunities to grow socially, emotionally, and academically, artistically, um, and with reading, of course. So I thought I would share a little slideshow of some of the things that I've done with the teens over the past 17 years. So hopefully this will work out. Okay, so we've had lots of book and reading themed events over the years. Um, we have had book clubs. There's a homeschool. There, one of these pictures is of a homeschool. Hey, yes. You need to share your screens. I'm not sharing it. Okay. Sorry. Got it? No. <laughs> oh, there it is. It yep, says it you are up. screen sharing. Okay. Good? Okay. Okay, so as I was saying, working with the teens and, um, you know, is, is the most rewarding part. Um, I enjoy working with people of all ages, but uh, you know, as the teen librarian, um, it's very dear to my heart that we do all of these fun uh, activities. So um, over the years, we've had plenty of book and reading themed events from homeschooled book clubs to reading programs where we gave away a, a nook um, back when those were big, um, a scary storytelling day. Uh, book faces where kids find books, book uh, jackets that they can <laughs> take pictures of themselves with. Um, up in the corner, that's a, a Wizard of Oz themed scavenger hunt. <clears throat> uh, we've had quite a few author and illustrator visits over the years. That's Linda Sue Park, um, who came and we had a, a, a great um, turnout for um, her book, uh, her talk about um, A Long Walk to Water. Community collaborations are especially fun and important to me and um, to the teens, of course. Uh, the, on the left hand side, you will see a girl who is uh, creating um, cat beds, which we donated to Lollipop Farm. Um, above that, that uh, piece of artwork is a six by six piece of artwork that we, uh, that I had the teens make that we brought to the Rochester Contemporary uh, Gallery's six by six show. Um, beneath that is actually a field trip that we took um, to Jiva when there was a, a very relevant um, teen-oriented play that they wanted to collaborate with us on. And finally, the big picture um, is a gingerbread house that we made for the uh, George Eastman House Sweet Creations. Over the years, we've had many visiting artists, um, and for, by artists, I mean, you know, gardening, photography, hula hooping artistry, <laughs> Mendy artistry. Um, musicians, makeup artists, magic shows, martial arts. I wanna also say that with visiting artists, Part of what's great about having them come to perform for the teens or work with the teens is that they often do talk a lot about their careers and how they got there. And um, they usually want teens to ask them questions. Where did you go to college? How did you attain this? So that's always an added bonus of having these visiting artists. 
at Penfield Public Library, we have a lot of multi-talented staff members. So this is another great way to show to the teens that, um, you know, people have all kinds of talents that they are willing to share. And as you can see um, on the left-hand side, uh, this was a, a former member of our staff who also was a graphic artist. She came in and shared her talents. Um, on the right-hand side is a current staff member, Kathleen Wakefield, who is a published poet. And she came into a teen program to do a poetry workshop with them. Um, we also have a very talented uh, program aide who is a writer and she's leading um, a writing club with the teens this summer as well as she did last summer. Over the years, just tons of arts and crafts. Um, and many, many programs that I've run myself as well. Teen Tuesdays before the pandemic was, was the day for teens to come to the library, not that they weren't there all the time. But uh, I look forward to getting back to Teen Tuesdays after school um, once we get back to you know normal. And uh, it was always just uh, a fun chance for teens to meet up after school, have some socializing, but we always had some kind of an activity going on as well. And, um, you know, lots of regulars who came all of their years in high school. I've had kids come back and talk to me afterwards and, and you know, have told me that 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 time meant a lot to them. Uh, tons of food programs over the years from, you know, just making, from myself making things with the kids to hiring uh, people to come to work with them to having like food sampling for, you know, this was actually like a, a vegetarian food sampling up here. Uh, drama and mystery programs. Again, I've run some. I've had um, visiting artists come to do those as well. And then they're fun because you get to have an audience come and either solve the mystery or watch the dramatic performance. Tons and tons of video, card, and board game tournaments and events over the years. Both, again, I should mention another, yes, another community collaboration with that is um, also with Just Games, which is a local Penfield business that will come to events and, and help me host those. This is just one program that <laughs> was one of my favorites of my whole career. Um, so I had to give it its own slide, a trash and show where teens combined, uh, they, they had to design their own outfits using recycled and upcycled materials. And we went really all out for this. It's actually, there's actually a link to a video on YouTube if you ever wanna check it out. But this was one of the top fun events that we had. And as you can see, this was also fun to have um, an audience come in. Everyone was invited, so we did have like adults and younger children as well, and uh, great, great fun. We've had technology-based, I know these don't exactly look like technology-based photos. The bottom one on the left is a Girls Who Code club, and this was actually right after they presented their, um, their projects and then they just wanted to have a little fun. And Girls in Architecture and Engineering, that was another great program where um, several women architects and engineers wanted to come and do a multi-session program. Tons of things with Legos over time. The Friends of the Library have supported, you know, purchasing Legos, some of these extreme kits, you know, things like decorating the teen area, always 
always fun. And now that we're in 2020 to 2021, yes, we've had to switch for a while to virtual and at home programs. So, you know, we're trying to make the most of that. It is, you know, it is a little sad not seeing all of the um, teams piling into the library after school. But um, we do get to <clears throat> give out take it, make it kits. And this was from a Peeps diorama contest that was held over um, the spring break. So they came into the library, picked up a kit that had marshmallow peeps and a few recycled materials, and they were also told they could find things at home, and people sent in their submissions. Um, so I'm also now planning the summer reading program, so we will have uh, that, and we will have um, Mostly the take it, make it craft kits. Those have been popular along with a, a Zoom component where um, some of them are run by myself and our program aid. Some are run by visiting artists. Um, okay, so let me stop sharing my screen so that I can be. Okay. So um, besides the young adult librarian hat that I wear, I do have other librarian duties and I, you know, love them all. I do really enjoy working with people. So I like being at the reference desk. Um, it's exciting to work with the diverse clientele that comes in, you know. It's um, fun to work with people of all ages. Um, you know, to do reader's advisory, um, technology questions, research questions. Um, I also hire, train, and supervise the library pages, uh, which can be busy because they are usually um, high school students or college students. So. Um, you know, there's just a natural turnover with that age group going on to different things. So I, you know, I do have to actually do quite a lot of hiring every year. Um, <clears throat> I also like to um, learn and expand on my knowledge and in the library profession, that's actually very easy to do. There are many, many, many opportunities to learn um, about all aspects of libraries. Um, I'm especially interested in emerging trends, social justice type issues in the library, um, patron focused service, leadership and management, partnerships and collaborations. So I do try to attend programs and conferences quite a bit, um, as well as take, I've taken some courses as well. Um, I like to get out in the community too and work with other groups, so um, you know, part of my job is meeting with other young adult librarians throughout the county, and that is extremely, extremely helpful and a wonderful resource. Um, I have been on different committees through the Monroe County Library System, the Advocacy Committee. Um, I was on a <clears throat> part of a mentorship program there, and um, I've served on the town of Penfield Wellness Committee, which has been a great way to, um, you know, solve problems and come up with ideas for, you know, the town of Penfield um, employees. I've served on the New York Library Association's Pied Piper Committee, which um, is an award for the best youth program in New York State. I also, have been a member of 
the MCLS Racial Equity and Justice Initiative. And now I'm going to switch over and speak about that a little bit and then how that transfers over to Penfield Public Library specifically. So in 2019, MCLS, the Monroe County Library System, was invited to form a change team and participate in the second cohort of the Racial Equity and Justice Initiative, which is um, a program that was being led by St. Joseph's Neighborhood Center at the time. And it's a collective impact modeled program. So in our cohort, there were 17 organizations from across this area. And um, you know there were colleges, um, different departments from the city of Rochester, uh, healthcare, various organizations. Um, so part of being in this uh, racial equity and justice initiative was to um, begin structural racism conversations within our organizations interrogate internal policies and procedures to enact future change and build cohesion around the issues of race. So this Reggie program provided a lot of the framework and resources for our team conversations. We did organizational self-assessment. They gave us a lot of res uh, resources to educate ourselves on topics such as implicit bias, power inequities, white privilege, and institutionally buried policies and procedures which disadvantage black, indigenous, and people of color. So um, they also had, uh, well, we wound up going to two different conferences that were exceptionally well run. Um, the pandemic did cut out one of the um, planned conferences, but in any case, um, the uh, the Reggie organizers, you know, supported us throughout the whole pandemic. Um, <clears throat> during the conference we learned more about like, the historical context of racism, the local history um, about Rochester, the great migration to Rochester, urban design, and a lot about the psychology and sociology of different levels of racism, institutional, structural, interpersonal. Uh, we had faculty mentors who empowered us as a team. And um, so what we were really supposed to do is to then kind of turn our focus inward to try to break down barriers in the library system and to, you know, examine the ways um, that we could be oppressing people. And the benefit of this was huge. It was such a benefit working with all of these different community partners and stakeholders. Um, we all had a different setting and a different journey to take, but we're in a better position to tackle all of these difficult interconnected problems when we work within a larger community. And it's also, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in working together within your community as a library. Um, it was very good to work with other members of the Monroe County Library System, as well as all of those other community partners. So, 
some of the things that we looked at and are continuing to look at um, in the Reggie group are, um, you know, training and education, hiring practices, um, <clears throat> ways to be more patron focused and to break down barriers. Um, we're also looking at, you know, some longer term things as well. Um, for example, classification systems, not something that uh, I really thought about too much before this, but there are some ways that library classification systems are um, inherently um, create some barriers. Um, another big one that is a polarizing topic, but nonetheless, it's something that is being uh, discussed and implemented in libraries everywhere across the country are, are fine eliminations. So those are some longer term things that uh, we continue to discuss. Um, <clears throat> so while I continue to serve on that Reggie team, first of all, that is formally our time was over two years. However, we're continuing to meet as a group and um, kind of figuring out what we're doing next, but we've got actually a lot of ideas, <laughs> so putting them together. In the meantime, um, at Penfield, I um, asked our director, Bernadette, and the rest of the staff uh, if they would like to engage in some anti-racism and diversity, equity, inclusion work at Penfield. And um, so there was a lot of support for that and a lot of interest. So about, uh, I would say in February, uh, we began meeting. Um, it's just uh, an informal group and we are meeting approximately every other week for an hour. And I've had interest from all of the different job titles in the library. So we've had um, people coming from the children's department, clerks, aides, librarians. And we've just, you know, I, I'm, I'm asking people what they want to do. And basically our meetings have been falling into having like a little discussion at the beginning. Um, we've asked and discussed such questions like what does equity look like in the library? Um, we've looked at some resources that can help you assess yourself and where you fall on a continuum of being an anti-racist organization, you know, talking about how we can remove barriers to access. Um, a lot of our staff members do participate in many programs and trainings and reading on you know a personal level about these issues. So um, it's just great to be able to share some of the things that we've learned. Um, so besides um, reading, and discussing. We've also watched some short videos and things, and I actually provided a resource sheet that you can see some of the things that we've been looking at. We also decided to um, try to get some work accomplished by going through a checklist uh, from actually from some librarians in Wisconsin, and it's called um, an inclusive services guide. And this was recommended to me by someone else from another library. And it's a really 
pretty complete guide to you know things that you can look at in all of the different areas of libraries from collections to programming to governance to building language services so it's going to take us a little while to get through it so far we've had some great um, conversations on the collection section and we're working on the programming section now we do already have a, a we are you know we we are proud of a lot of the work that we do all the time we have had some um, wonderful adult programs recently especially thanks to our adult programming librarian Peggy O'Neill uh, one of the programs I mentioned on the resources sheet that I distributed to you and it has to do with um, racist policy and resistance in Rochester I highly highly recommend it um, it was recorded um, Peggy hosted the program on April 13th, and it's with a, a man, an educator named Shane Wiegand. Uh, highly recommend that to everyone. Um, we, I think, are very successful with some of the displays and things that we've had up representing lots of different people. And, um, our collections, you know, I think we're we're doing well with purchasing materials that are representing lots of people. Um, you know, however, there there will be areas that we would like to improve on. So I'm thinking that once we go through this inclusive services guide, I would love to report back to you again we're still we're still at the very beginning it's we've had a few we've had quite a few conversations now um but there's there's a lot to talk about and um everyone seems to agree that this is very important and it's absolutely something that public libraries should be doing sort of um, always looking through that diversity, equity, inclusion lens. You know, I believe that it should be done with pretty much every decision that a library makes. So I, we're on the right track. We're moving forward. And I would love to um, answer any questions that you have but and i would love to you know ask for your support i would love to see any any kind of uh dei policy that you could put into place or planning with your strategic planning i would very strongly advocate for that um And as I mentioned, so I'm thinking maybe late summer, early fall, we could have gone through a lot of this checklist that we have and could provide you with um, a report or a presentation or a discussion about some of our findings on that. Um, I One other thing I will mention is one other thing that we're doing right now is uh, Asian American and Pacific Islander Month in May. Um, everyone jumped right on board with getting ready for that so that we are making sure that we have um, the books and resources in the library and that we can be promoting them, putting them on display, and pointing people in that direction so that we can fulfill our um, desire to be welcoming to all. So that is most of what I had to say, but I'd be happy to answer any questions or expand on anything, if there's anything right now or anytime. Thank you so much. 
Both parts of what you had to say were really fascinating. I enjoyed hearing about your role as the young adult librarian, and I thought that your work with the um, diversity, equality, and inclusion committee is really both on the MCLS level and the Penfield Library level is great. And I think we would love to have you come back either by yourself or with some of the others at the library and put on a presentation for the board and you know share what you've learned. And we are moving into um, looking at what we can do in the community as far as um, strategic planning and other, and other resources. And I think that is a great lens for us to use. But let me open it up. Does anybody have any comment? I, you've covered so much, Lila. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Um, not really a question, just a comment. I just wanted to let you know. So um, when you mentioned like, you know, DEI policies and things like that. Um, so I actually chair the policy and procedure committee. So if there are any, as you are, are working through that, if there are any recommendations, any suggestions that you have for policies we could put in place that would help to further those, um, I can make sure you have, you know, my email address and, and certainly feel free to just say, you know, maybe the committee could talk about this or look at this because we're always, you know, looking to make sure that we have those exactly. in place. Okay. So absolutely, we're always open to any input or suggestions that you might have. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And we would love to, you know, work with you, get your ideas, get your suggestions. And yes, if you are interested in um, looking at some of those resources I sent, I think you'll find them to be valuable. Uh, the first resource on there was an interrupt racism toolkit, which was actually um, uh, presented to us by the Urban League of Rochester, which is actually now the kind of parent organization for the Reggie program. Um, so that is something that we've been using to educate ourselves and, you know, as a jumping off point for some of our discussions, I highly recommend that. That's really, that's good. And we, it looks like we've got a big list of things to look at. We've got a couple yes. other questions. Um, Linda? Okay. Hi. Um, Lila, Lila, you know. Hi. <laughs> I, I love the adult the, the part of the DEI, but I was wondering with all your um, background with young, young people, if you wanted to somehow combine that, you know, I know, as you know, I looked at the pictures you were showing about the, <laughs> the kids and, and my daughter and Anybody nephew were familiar? there from 10 years ago, <laughs> you know, back in the day. And, and, you know, those kids, they loved going over the library and seeing you. You were so welcoming to them. It made them feel so important. And, you know, it's great. And so I'm thinking, I, I understand there's some issues in the schools right now as far as um, acceptance and so on like that. And I just wondered if, if this expertise that you're gathering under DEI, if you could possibly bring that as a, uh, I don't know, a teen program or something of that nature. I think you probably have an audience that would come right over to you, but uh, potentially gather some more and they could learn. Have you, have you considered that? Um, as far as uh, a program, well, you know, I, I, I'm just trying to use that, like I said, use that DEI lens when I make decisions. So, you know, I'm trying to incorporate it into everything that I do. Mm -hmm. um, I know that um, it's something I'm hoping to talk to the school librarians about. Next week, we do have a joint um, public and school librarian meeting, which is another really valuable um, partnership that, you know, that, that we do. We meet with them at least twice a year. And uh, that was definitely a topic that we, that I wanted to, uh, myself and the children's librarians and, and Bunny wanted to talk to, um, to them about and see how, you know, we can support each other in that. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we reopen to in-person teen programming, um, 
yeah, it's it's something that uh, you know is is just good to talk about too. And um, in the anti-racist work that I've done, or the education, you know, just just talking about it and recognizing it and discussing it with teens is mm -hmm. is a good thing to do. Right. Well, thank you. you. You're very articulate on the matter. Naraj, did you have a question? No? Okay. Judy? Well, you talked a lot about barriers that mm -hmm. you're, that are, you know, you're working on um, as far as even educating our own. What do you and Bonnie see as our barriers at Penfield Library? Well, um, there are all kinds of barriers that are just systemically, you know, worked into our entire social history. So, you know, a lot of them are not visible. Um, Many people, you know, would believe that a library is, you know, very equal and everyone is, is, is equal. That's what libraries are all about. So rooting out some of those kind of systemic racism issues, you know, it, it's, it's hard work. Um, but I mean, I would love to see, um, you know, more diversity in the staffing and um, in the recruiting of, of staff members, the recruiting of, of board members. Um, just like I mentioned, creating a welcoming environment in all ways, language, even the language that is used in libraries sometimes um could be a more positive more positive and inclusive um the the displays that people are seeing when they walk in are they seeing books book covers that reflect you know that reflect them and their families um you know, I believe that in this community, our collections, you know, should should portray a world view as well as a local view. And I believe that we are all um, part of this greater Monroe County. We have users certainly that are Penfield residents, but within all of the Monroe County libraries, we are open to everyone in the county and welcome everyone. So there's there's great diversity, and a, you know, and a willingness and a, a desire to to learn about you know all different kinds of people, not just not just our you know what we're familiar with. So, um, but. Certainly, you know, going to larger topics, like I said, in <laughs> maybe in the future, um, you know, we, in the MCLS Reggie program, we definitely looked at, at uh, fines, library fines as a barrier. And that is a very big current topic with libraries around the county and or around the country and around the world as well eliminating those fines is is huge hmm. interesting are there any other questions for lila this evening well thank you thank you very much we have our our homework over the next few months so we can read that before you come back so we can and um I, I hope we can use you as a resource if we have any questions as we go through our strategic planning process. I'll try, I'll try. You know, it's a process for everyone. It's a long-term commitment to, you know, 
to move in the direction of anti-racism. It's a journey for you know everyone that wants to take part. So I just you know would like the library to keep moving forward with that. I think it is a great goal, and I think we can start taking steps. So thank you again. Okay, you're welcome. Um, Linda, would you like to give us the um, town liaison report? Oh, sure. There's um, a meeting tomorrow night. We actually have three things that are um, business oriented. I know people seem to like to hear about what's coming in. We have a new chiropractic office that's going to open in the old Langford Opticians um, building in the Four Corners. You know, it's a historic building. It's been there and it's been vacant for a bit. And uh, that's one thing. The South Bay Grill, which is this nice restaurant that's down on um, Empire, Empire Boulevard, um, just past LaSalle's Landing Park. Uh, we're going to approve that they can have a grill outside with um, some low-key music in the summer. And they're pretty excited about going forward with that. And the last one's really kind of interesting, and that's that uh, the Daisy Flower Mill, which has been vacant for a number of years. The last time I was in it was when it was the we had the bicentennial in 2010. We had the gala there, and uh, it was the Gatherings owned it, and they were a catering place. But they folded, and it's been vacant. And, and this is a very historic building. So somebody's going in, and they're going to have it as a restaurant, but also as a dog care facility. This is some, it's kind of bizarre, right? They, they do it out west, apparently, in, in the south, in different places. There aren't around here to compare. But these two women, they were really excited. They, uh, they'd seen it and they heard about it. They love dogs, they love restaurants, and so they bought it for that purpose. And um, they're only gonna have the dogs in the area what is the newer portion of the uh, facility. It's not the historic end of it, but uh, they, they've covered all their bases with the neighbors and keeping the sound out and all this. And it sounds like it's going to be really an interesting venture for Penfield to have something of that nature. So those are three businesses that we're approving tomorrow night. Otherwise, you know, things are, you think we, we hear people come and speak about potential pickleball courts and disc golf courses and stuff like that in Shadow Pines. We haven't said anything yet because we have to get engineers to go out there and check about where all this will be laid out on the um, on the grounds but uh, that's going on and that's really I think all I have right now we're still meeting on zoom <laughs> you know um, anybody have any questions any questions for Linda okay Thank you, Linda. Oh, and Barbara, those picture, that picture was great. Uh, and uh, Melissa and, and Niraj, I love that new sign you have. So Barbara posted on Facebook and I shared it. I shared it out there. I think it's excellent. And it's gonna, it, it, you know, great for you guys to put that together. And um, it, it, it's, a, it's a, one of those moments of more welcoming, I think, to the library too. So thank you. Know, you. Kudos to you for doing that. Well, and especially to Melissa who designed it. Um, and now we'll move into our other um, committee reports. Rachel, would you like to talk about the employee survey? So we sent out um, a revised draft of the employee satisfaction survey. We've done this for a couple of years now. Um, we send it out to the whole staff and they've been really good about responding. It's anonymous. We get the responses back and then I compile all the information and share it with you. Um, so did everyone have a chance to look at some of the changes that were made? I highlighted them in yellow to try and make them stand out a little bit. Um, I thought just, that was really helpful. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, Melissa gave me some feedback just to add in a little wording, and that was actually on a question that had already been on the survey. But um, does anyone have any comments or are we ready to vote to pass the changes? Any questions? Anything that you think needs to be added or altered? Okay. Is there a motion to approve these? These questions for the employee survey? Brett. Brett made the motion. And Megan, you can be the second. All right. All in favor? Okay. 
And when, okay. what is your time frame, Rachel? Um, Bunny, is Gail still working? She's not working full time. She has on call status just to bridge to the new office clerk too, and then to stay on long enough to train train the new person. Okay, so in the past, she has kind of helped with um, disseminating it to all of the employees and just making sure they know where to return it. Who who can I work with to make sure that it gets passed on to everyone? Do you want it done this week? Um, I yeah, if we could. Gail. Okay. <laughs> is, yep. is she there? Well, she will be she's not doing coming in on an on-call basis. So okay. she still has her active email address, her library okay. email address. So if that's the way you want to communicate with her, you can use that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, that's all set. And then the only other thing that I had to discuss was um, the director uh, evaluation for the year. Um, after this meeting, I'll email that to everybody. You can either return it to me at our next meeting or sooner, either by email, you can drop it off at my house or in person at our next meeting. Okay. Sound good? Thank you. Okay, great. And Melissa, strategic planning. You. Okay, um, the main thing we wanted to discuss tonight was the community survey. Um, I met with Bunny a couple weeks ago to share it with her. Um, everybody on the board has had a chance to look at it um, and submit their comments. And we were just going to see if there were any changes tonight. Um, and Bunny was going to talk it over with her staff as well and see if they wanted to add anything or change anything. Um, so, Bunny, did you have any changes or feedback? I do have some staff feedback on it. Um, one of the comments that was made to me is that the questions seem a little bit leading. Um, and there are times when you have, you ask for um, people to make choices and you give you provided the choices it might be uh, give you a little more diversity if you left it open ended and and asked for them to fill in um, their ideas of what their choices are for those particular questions also if you if you choose not to do that if you do want them to be closed ended um, then you should have an even distribution between positive and negative and there was a little bit of an imbalance there which questions um, are you talking about bunny i think one of them asks you to mention adjectives that you would use to describe the library that's one of the ones that was cited for that. Okay. That one, um, that one has, it does have a few options, but um, the majority are actually, uh, I guess, positive adjectives, and there were only three or four that were, I guess, you know, um, negative if you want to say that but we did give an option to do you know other you know fill in the blank and I we tried to do that, that for more the, there are more positive than negatives right yeah. there's more positive than negative and yeah. i also think that it's difficult in some cases if you just ask people what they think and leave them a space and they don't know well exactly what are you looking for and by having some choices with a blank it gives them an idea of the kinds of things and they might be able to use that and come up with something i think most of them we we have a choice and if we don't we can always add that yeah most of them do have an uh a fill in the blank at the end if if a choice was not uh something they wanted to select yeah the choices should be a little more balanced there there should be as many negatives as there are positives there um we can do that 
At one point, um, you ask people to identify themselves. The self-identification is very binary. And we do have people who do not identify in a binary way. They should have a non-binary option there to identify themselves. Um, let's see. Uh, one of the, the staff members asked why you're asking about people participating in curbside or virtual programs at another library. What is your evaluation of our library or of another library? So if I don't know what you're trying to get at there, but maybe word it in a way that doesn't sound quite so much like you're seeking information about another library, maybe more about us. Um, I think the intention and um, the other strategic planning committee members can also um, chime in here, but the point of asking that was to see if there's another library that stands out as being um, having um, a good service that other that patrons are using, it would give us an opportunity to look at, you know, maybe why why is that one particular library standing out and see if they're doing something differently. It's more just a way for us to um, look at ways to improve if that's even the case. Another comment I got was the age ranges. They seem to this person to start artificially high. The thought with possibly beginning with having the range be 17 or below, then the young adult range going up to like 39. Um, the categor categorization to that person seemed a little bit arbitrary. You know, and I think it's always going to be sure. arbitrary. We didn't yeah. want to go too far down because nobody would be able to take, those people are not going to be able to do the survey. Well, you asked for the comments from the staff, and so, those were the comments from the staff. That's good. Well, I, I have some you... comments. I didn't report them to Bonnie yet, so <laughs> if I can take up a little more time, I would love to give I think my that's comments. Fine. Yeah, we would love your, um, we really wanted your feedback too, Lila, with all the training that you've done. We thought you'd be able to really help us frame some of the questions um, specifically about um, the patrons and um, I guess how to ask and what to ask about who's coming to the library. Okay, well, um, thanks. Um, well, first of all, I'm really glad that you're doing this um, community feedback survey. And um, it immediately brought to mind um, uh, a course that I took. Um, it's actually um, a MOOC course, so it's one of those um, open, massive open online courses. I took some library, public library management courses through edX, University of Michigan, and it immediately brought to mind a course called Identifying Community Need. And so I went back and looked at some of the lectures because they do talk about um, surveying your community in that. They also talk about ways to research your community need and they talk about um, you know ways to have conversations um, with your community so um, first of all I also want to say that you know getting the community input is also really essential to diversity equity and inclusion but the first thing I kind of noticed about the survey is you know, I, I would love to see more of a purpose communicated, you know, maybe like an intro. And um, when I went back and looked at this course, you know, which anybody can view for, you can audit it for free or you can just kind of go through and look at the lectures. Um, but the instructor really talked about having an introduction with a purpose and sort of like you know, asking for the community's help, like saying, we need your help to, uh, so that we can better serve you. And, and then it even like, in, the, in there in the sample survey she gave us, it even had, um, you know, if you have questions, here's who to contact about the survey. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, I think the survey is, is, is you know, pretty much fine. Um, I agree with 
um, <clears throat> one of the staff members comments about having a non-binary um, you know gender to choose from um, or a write-in one for people who want to self-describe um, in this course though that I went through she talks a lot about um, and again, I'm not, I, you know, I'd want to know more of your, your purpose, but she talks a lot about asking not only questions about the library, but asking questions about the community because, you know, in a lot of cases, people don't know what to ask for from their libraries. But if you kind of ask questions, you know, if these are important to you, like, you know, what are the three top issues our community needs to worry about? Um, which needs do you think our community addresses effectively? Um, you know, what is being well supported or not well supported in the community? Then you've got, you know, some data to bring back um, to say that here are the things in our community that um, we would really like to help solve and you know we're up for the challenge in many cases it can't be done alone but it can be done you know collectively again like that collective modeled collective impact modeled way to address challenges in the community um, you know she also mentioned the instructor of the course mentioned things you know like what do you appreciate most about the library? What frustrates you most about the library? Some open-ended questions like that. And then, um, if the library were closed for the day, where would you go to get those services you wanted? And I know that you put as a question, which neighboring libraries would you visit? But in this course, she also really tried to get people to think about you know, other competitors to your library besides other libraries. We actually have all kinds of competitors that people can turn to for not exactly the same services, but, you know, there's other places people can go to get books. There's other places people can go to get technology help. So, um, I, that is one question I liked. If the library were closed, where would you go? So, um, I, but mostly, you know, the first thing that struck me, like I said, was I would love to know, you know, like a little intro, like a purpose. And, uh, you know those those resources are good. The other the other resource that I put on uh, the page that I had was um, an ALA initiative on their website called um, Libraries Transforming Communities, and I haven't looked into that too deeply. The instructor in this course kept referring to it. And I've looked at it, you know, a little bit. It's got a lot of great, great tips, again, on how to, um, you know, partner with your community to have those discussions, to see what your community really, you know, wants to solve, what, they, what needs are not being met by whatever organization so that the library can play a role in those challenging problems. So it also has a lot of um, resources for like starting discussions with people, for you know leading discussions in the library, going out in the community and speaking, things of that nature. So, Linda, really does, helpful. Our, does our town community ever send out a survey? It's been a long time since we had one. But you know, community needs assessment. Yeah, that would be a great thing to have. Um, well, please share it with the town for sure. 
But even like Rotary and Kiwanis, the service groups, they look for the same thing because you're looking for what are the needs of the community. So I don't know if, if, if you're promoting this as a library is like the heart of the town because it's a center of a community uh, ability to get together, you know. Yeah, that would make sense. But no, we don't have anything. We haven't for a long time. So, you know, if the, if the scope gets broadened, um, you might want to talk to somebody at the town or just, um, you know, share it, share the results. I think that's a great idea to probably talk with someone and maybe, Melissa, we could talk offline um, and about this. And we were thinking about putting this on the new website and then posting the link and, and really publicizing the fact that people can just go and fill out the, um, the, the um, survey online. And I know Dave Renner said that the town has Survey Monkey, so we would be able to capture the results and we wouldn't have to sit there and tabulate things by hand. And it allows us to really reach a wider group of people and to get their feel, feedback. So I think that getting the survey in the hands of the public is really as key as coming up with the right questions. But it sounds like, what, Melissa, do you the, think? I mean, the survey is to help guide us as we work on the strategic plan. And um, the questions that you brought up, I think, are fantastic. And we should definitely try to incorporate them into the survey. Um, they're, they're much more specific and uh, purpose driven, I guess. Um, so I, uh, maybe I can reach out to you separately, Lila, to just make sure we're on the same page. But I think everything you suggested sounds great and would really help us as we work on our strategic plan. Okay, great. Yeah, a lot of the, the wording of these questions is not like my original idea, but, um, you know, and the instructor of this course, you know, makes it you know, very clear that every library is different. Every library has different needs, but you know, here are some, you know, some ways to get the kind of information you're looking for. So yeah, I'd be happy to talk again with you about it. I'd love to actually work on strategic planning. And um, again, I, I think those resources that I put on there you know, you would find really helpful too. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Melissa, I just wanted to add that I recently sat in on a webinar that was directed towards professional development and getting feedback from staff members for things. And one of the things that they focused on was the kind of questions that you asked where you gave options. Um, they actually said that, that was a strength for giving options because you'll get more results that way. Uh, people who will skip the, the um, open answer questions, I mean, definitely need to have some of those for if you're asking people to give their specific opinions. But having information like this is more helpful than to go forth and use the information to tally it up and use it for your, your purposes. So I think we definitely should keep some of these questions that, um, that give the, uh, some of these options. I mean, I, you have others uh, with a blank too, and that's important too for people to give, but um, I just want you to know I did uh, just, just learn that this past week actually, that those are important questions to have. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, Melissa, I just wanted to also say uh, when we are sending out the survey, we should work on getting a QR code so that you just pull it up on your phone and it takes you right to it. Yep, that's okay. something that we'd like to do um, to have at the circulation desk. Sounds great. And maybe on posters questions? and other places so people could yep do that when they're out and about in the town because we hope to capture people who might not use the library but would if they knew more about it. So, okay, Megan. All right, so for policies and procedures, uh, tonight we have a new uh, proposed policy to vote on our uh, employee identification badges policy and procedure. Um, that was distributed 
uh, before this meeting and then also before the last meeting. Um, so basically the purpose of it is to ensure uh, security and exceptional customer service. So uh, the high points are that all full-time and part-time staff persons uh, will be issued a staff identification card with their name, photograph, and work area. They will be expected to wear that while they're on duty. Um, and it does state that it needs to be clearly visible at all times. So if it is on a lanyard or something like that, it will need to be um, clearly visible and not um, flipped over. Uh, every employee will have one staff identification card. Um, if they do show up to work without it, they can be issued a temporary identification for the day. Obviously, it wouldn't have their photo on it, um, but that would be done by the director. And it will be the responsibility of the supervisors to make sure uh, that employees under their supervision are wearing their staff identification cards. Is there any discussion? Do we think we've discussed this enough? I don't know. May I <laughs> speak again, or is this something that needs to be spoken to by the board? This is something. This is just a board thing. This this one is. Uh, I think. I, right. But although, if you have something to say, I think it would be silly for us not to hear it. Well, um, all I would say is, you know, I can see both sides of the of the name tag issue and um, personally I would not advocate for it being like mandated well we've been through that okay we've we have we have already had that discussion we have we've discussed this for about three months now okay so this is our final vote okay We've also discussed it with other libraries. In fact, Monroe County Library System. So I, I think we've. And the town too, I believe, right? Yes, in the town. So we are following the town policy. We are following other libraries in the county and the city library. So we are, we are not out here doing something. We are not being mean people. We are trying to protect the staff and the public. I just had a comment on one of the sections with the wording. Mm -hmm. um, when it says when an employee loses his, her staff identification. Change that to know, if possibly. Either if or in the event of okay. loss. And then I would also, instead of saying second identification, change that to replacement. Okay. Would you like to move that this is approved? Uh, yes, yeah, so I just made that quick uh, change that Rachel had suggested. So the wording is now that in the event that an employee loses his or her staff identification card, and rather than the issue of a second identification, it's the issue of a replacement identification. Um, so at this point, I would move that we approve the policy as it's written. Is there a second? I can second. Okay, Rachel. <laughs> All in favor, raise your hand. It's unanimous, thank you. And that leads us to Bunny. We're ready for the director's report. Sorry, I forgot I was muted. Uh, <laughs> did anybody have any questions or comments on my submitted report? Um, I just had a question. So with the recommendation from the MCLS uh, that the amount for downloadable materials be increased from 4 to 10 percent, do you think that's related to COVID and seeing an increase in people utilizing the downloaded materials more? I think that is part of it, yes. Okay. I had, a, I had a different kind of question when you were talking about how the funds were going to be reallocated. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned at all about maintaining the library's allocation from this year to next year? I mean, with, with you mean the, the, 
total materials budget out of just in general mostly the materials budget but are you concerned that we might have a time when the materials budget is cut well we were cut this year of course um i'm hoping next year will give us a chance to recoup a little bit i always hope that i finally got it up to a level that i was satisfied with and then we got slashed um so I do hope that that we will be able to um, bump that up a little bit for this year. I'm going to try it anyway. We'll see. And I had a question on the statement about out of county card holders are going to be about collecting fines and how we can't collect from people who try to use a bank card for very technical reasons. That are probably above my pay grade, but <laughs> are are the, were those funds collected be allocated to the various libraries, or the, will they all just go? Will there be a formula for that, or will they all go to the Rochester Public Library? That's my question. They don't go to Rochester Public Library. They go to the Monroe County Library System. So the Rochester Public Library is just acting as the financial. There, yes, because of that technicality on the authorized.net on the Monroe County Library System site, uh, being unable to split out fine collection from fee collection in this case. Um, yes, uh, Rochester Public Library is going to act as the, uh, I guess, proxy acceptor of the fees and then make sure that the Monroe County Library system get gets that behind the scenes they'll they'll transfer that over to Monroe County Library system and I don't need to know any more than that <laughs> <laughs> neither do I <laughs> are there any other questions for bunny um I had one more thing to mention. Um, we have selected a new office clerk too, and it is the library's job to do the selection, but it is the board's job to do the appointment. So let me tell you a little bit about the person we have selected. Um, her name is Deanna Herco. She has worked for the town before. She's a Penfield resident. She has extensive experience. She was, of all the people we interviewed, the one that had the, the most experience in every aspect of the tasks that we expect of this person. She has been a regular library user and her children have come up using the library and they've been teen volunteers in the past. Um, so she was very excited to have the opportunity to interview for the job and is very excited to have it if you agree that we can appoint her. Do we have a resume or anything to look at? I can probably provide you with a resume. I don't, I don't know, I, I just... You, usually usually the, the library selects and then the the board endorses that by appointing that person that the library selected. Well, where I, does she work now, Bunny? She's working for BOCES. In the same kind of capacity? Uh, no, she assists with some of their special programs. She helps compile the, the statistics and the data that they they use to for their reporting, for their their programs for some special programs that they have. But she has done, um, she has taken minutes in the past when she worked for the town before, I believe it was the planning board. She was the, the secretary for them. Um, she is very adept at using a lot of the tools that we use to keep track of our personnel and our uh, money here. She's very good with Excel. Um, She's, she's worked with, with all the, the different tools that, that we use here. She need to be uh, 
brushed up on we use paychecks of course for personnel and she need to be brushed up a little bit on that but but she has similar experience with the in some jobs she's had with with uh, keeping track of the kind of personnel data that we keep track of well you sound very enthusiastic about her which is a good thing since you'll be working so closely together I, I would like to see a resume just because I'd like to see a resume, but I think that we could go ahead and make the appointment. If, yeah, I can, I can see that you, you get a resume. I'll just make a little note to myself here to get that to you. That would be, that would be really nice. Does, would someone like to mm -hmm. move that we appoint Deanna Herkel, Rachel, and Brett? It will be the second. All in favor of the appointment, please raise your hand. It's unanimous. So Will we get to meet her at the next meeting? Do you yes, think? She'll be, she will take the minutes for the next meeting. So when can we stop in and introduce ourselves to her, Bunny? She starts work on Monday. Okay. Very good. Last month, we talked about the fact that we have money in our gifted memorial fund. And Tony had suggested that we come up with a way of spending it because it would be a good idea for us to take charge of that. And we mentioned that, and Brett sent around a list of, to yeah, start us thinking of some ideas. and. I think that that is really good. And in the meantime, there was a notice that went out from MCLS about a finance training. And I signed up and I went last week. And um, Patty Utaro and Adam Traub, who Bunny had invited in to um, talk with us, and um, Bree, and I didn't get Bree's last name. I don't remember. Harrison. 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 The three of them did the training, and about the first half of it was pretty much what you would expect. Here are the sources of income, here's where it goes, here's a pie chart, here's sort of a Gantt chart, and it was all pretty cut and dried. But then they started talking about different kinds of grants, and I thought, aha! <laughs> and they were very excited because this year, it appeared that there was going to be very little money in any kind of construction grant fund for library co libraries. And construction doesn't mean a new library. It means projects. And um, I thought, oh, and that would be, that could be good, but I was thinking we don't, we're not really ready for that. And people, at, and one person who was from a brand, what I consider a brand new library, raised her hand and said, oh, we need doors between our children's room and the, and the adult area. And Patty Utaro looked at this woman and said, you're a new library. You're not going to get that. <laughs> this is going to be people who have not gotten any, any kind of funding for a while. So while we are looking at our ideas, what I think would be great is if we came up with a wish list and then talk to the town to see if we could have someone and work with them on how, because it's a town building, to have someone come in and say, how would we reimagine our space? What would we do? This is almost, it's almost 50 years in this place with, in our current space without any changes. And what they did was take over an elementary school. And the elementary school, it's like elementary schools that I went to when I was in grade school. And so we know it's old. And it's um, maybe there are things that can be done just to reallocate it that we don't know. And I think it would be exciting for us to have our wish list and then work with Bunny and the staff and ourselves and the community and see how would we, what's our vision? How would we work on this? And we don't have time to do this for this year. There's no way we're going to get any kind of grant done in time. 
but perhaps by next year we could do that. And we, it would need to go through MCLS because they need to approve it. And if it doesn't have their seal of approval, it's probably not going to go anywhere in Albany. They'll just say, what are these people thinking? But, you know, if we could get their support. So I'm hoping that this is something that we would consider, but we can start with Brett's list. Bunny, well, you look like you'd like to say something. I, I do, because I've been on the construction grant committee since I became the director here. So I have a lot of experience administering those grants. And yes, there's a, a limited amount of money and the construction grant committee meets and decides among all the competing applications for construction, uh, we recommend to the, it goes to the Monroe County Library System Board and they vote on what things get approved for construction grant. Um, and then that goes on to, to Albany from there. Well, I think judging from the comment that um, Patty Utaro made to this other library, that not, we, we did a little addition, I believe, in the early 1990s. But other than that, we haven't really examined the space. And is this the best use? Do we really want the young adult people stuck way in the back corner? Maybe they prefer that. <laughs> they might. They might say, we don't want to be out there in front. But, you know, I think there are a lot of things that need to be considered. So if this is a direction that we'd like to go, I'd like to start looking at Brett's list. And I have this, and some of you made um, comments to that. And I don't know if you have them with us, but we conveniently have a whiteboard, and I would be happy to put these up here. And we could just, tonight, if we could just make a list and start to prioritize them. And then um, I will talk to Jim Costello at the town and have him guide us as to who, because I know the town works with engineering firms, and I don't know how they do this. I don't even know who to talk to. So that's why I would start with Jim and say, who do we talk to? Who would come in and look at this and use part of the money that we have to pay for the outside consulting? And maybe the town would pay for part of that too. Although I don't know that the town has a lot of extra money sitting around. But, you know, they might be able to come up with a little here or there. Is that something you all think is a good idea? I do. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Honey, how many requests do you get for, uh, for the grants? Are there a lot of libraries uh, putting in for this? It varies from year to year. Some years, and it depends on if we have plenty of money, which we have had a couple of years that I've, I've been involved with it, we were delighted to be able to fund all the requests. But most of the time, we have more requests than, for more money than, than we have money. And uh, we're, we're cutting up kind of a small pie to, to distribute around. But it can vary. It just depends on the year, what, what people have going on. Okay. So are we talking about this list, particularly that Brett sent, well, to use this money towards? Or are we also no, we're looking, looking at in this. terms of the possibility of requesting a grant for some major improvements? Or are they one and the same? <laughs> they are one and the same. Okay. But when we are requesting major improvements, the goal would be to have this list in order. Like bathroom inside the library. I know that several people have mentioned that for children, especially parents, if you have one child if you, who needs to use the restroom and you've got two or three with you, the other ones will not have to go right then. And so you have to drag them with you because you don't want to leave them. You can't send a child out in the hallway. So that is something, and also for senior citizens. Some people, as they get older, need to have the facilities closer. So these are things that we would like to have as we're reimagining the space. How would we do that? 
but I think we need to have a list of things that we are thinking about to give someone an idea. So we have... I think certainly because I know there's been a lot of talk about, you know, inclusion and things like that. I, I really think in terms of that, I think a unisex bathroom inside the library um, would be beneficial. Or, you know, I know you mentioned people with multiple kids, but, you know, in my family, my daughter's at a really awkward age. She's seven. So if she's out with my husband and she needs to use the bathroom, she's not really comfortable going into the men's room anymore. Um, right. But at seven years old, she's also not old enough to just be set loose and... A public restroom so um, you know and, and certainly you know maybe for people who you know don't identify or or something like that you know not having oh my goodness we can't no one can hear me You know, as we go out and talk to people and people start filling out the survey, we may find that people, are, the public has other things that they would like to see. Um, and then... For some reason, my printer today would only print out everybody's list separately. seems to be a very pop the self checkout seems to be a very popular item so we have a bathroom inside the library install energy efficient lights self checkout kiosks web that has actually that would be mine too um, self checkout new carpeting furniture host more public events a more inviting teen room outdoor gazebo a puppet theater and and a drive-up book drop. <clears throat> Are there any other um, things that you all would, can think about? Lila, do you have any suggestions? Well, uh, one of my top things would be uh, improvements to the programming room in the Brayman room. Mm -hmm. um, I think tables should. and new tables and chairs or desks of some kind. Yeah, and I um, think that was something Melissa. Had I think she did too. Specifically, right. was updating the Brayman room. A new type of a kitchen facility there. Um, something that would make it easier to do arts and crafts, like an arts and crafts sink, separate mm -hmm. from like a food sink. Um, you it's, know, one of the, it's in great need of improvement in there. One of the suggestions Melissa had in terms of updating it was some kind of like a painted mural or something like that. And I'm wondering if that could even be a teen a program, a project to do some sort of a, you know, mural or art for the room or something like that. It's a possibility. I mean, I can say that I, I like kind of flexibility with a programming room because mm -hmm. there are there are so many different types of things that go on 
it's a possibility. I would probably prefer to have more ways to, you know, have like rotating art mm -hmm. displays in some way, or, or a mural in the teen area be probably my preference. But, um, you know, anything that can enliven the space, yes, would be, would be nice. But uh, just thinking functionally like, you know, floors that can be more easily cleaned in there, like perhaps like a tile and, or linoleum floor, mm -hmm. maybe on half of the room so that we like can do of some of those. vinyl wood floors, you know, the things that look yeah. like wood, but they're vinyl and they're easy to clean because somebody can go over it with a mop. So if you spill something on it, like a project or food, you can clean it mm -hmm. up. It doesn't live there forever. You know, I think the key to any, you know, library design now and in the future, you know, does have a lot to do with flexibility, you know, and I think that the pandemic has proven that as well. So, you know, just really smart, efficient planning of, of the And space. maybe things with built-in, like, Zoom capability. I think that the staff at the town has done a wonderful job retrofitting this room so we can be here and the folks can be at home and we can all see each other. But, you know, if we could set something like that up in the library, I think that would be. That's, that's an excellent idea. Some kind of a, a studio for us to, you know, produce things, but also just have quick, easy access to doing meetings with, you know, the, the good, good lighting and a good technology setup. Hey guys. That would be very helpful. Okay. Hey guys. Yes, Narash. Um, I remember when we went to one of those library um, conferences, they had those library architects that we can ask um, for input on. If we're looking for things to do, maybe getting ahead of the game and trying to see what they might see fit our library and then and then uh, roll with that, maybe well, it might I, be. I think we're going to start with the resources at the town and let them guide right. us. They might point us to one of those. Um, they know that there are library architects, but I would rather have that come from the town because it's the town's building. Okay. And we do, it's, it's not ours. So, but I think that those are the, those are the people maybe not those guys in particular, but I think those will be the kind of people we'll end up with. Can somebody make sure we have this down so we can have this in, oh good, thank you. I think this is Coming up with this and working with the town and getting started on this process and doing this in conjunction with our community survey is really important. And ideally, we will be able to have some kind of community visioning session based on the outcome of the survey and where we can go with the town. And I was thinking about this, I was thinking it'd be great if we could have, you know, like people here in the town hall auditorium. I don't know that we're going to be able to do that in the next six months. But what we could do, and I'll talk to Dave, is find out if people wanted to register, maybe we find out how many people we could have. Could we have 50? And then we would send them a URL so we would know who was signing up and then we could have conversations and maybe we would have more than one meeting. But I think the more opinions and comments that we get back, the better. I think maybe the staff as well, like what Lila brought up, I mean, it's gonna be a building you guys are working in every day, you know what you need as well. So I think kind of cultivating what they think they need too would be good to add, because I'm sure there's others that you see day to day as well. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And, you know, and in this inclusive services guide that we have too, um, you know, 
there's all kinds of questions about space and um, and I, I certainly do come across many <laughs> resources as I mentioned working in a library field you always have lots and lots of resources and people that are willing um, to share information so well, I will it's, share we have information. Bunny, who's been on this committee mm -hmm. so that'll be that would be a great resource for us to be able to get your opinion on where we're going when we get that when we get a lot farther along so um, which leads us to the auditor's <laughs> report for the evening the auditor's report yes it is um, I would like to make a motion to approve the April vouchers that were seventeen thousand eight hundred fifty-seven dollars and sixty cents. So, is there a motion to approve those? You, you moved. I moved. Sorry. There's Who a would second. Like okay. to second. Oh second. my goodness! Everybody second. We'll take Jen. <laughs> <laughs> um, all in favor? Please signify by raising your hand. Okay. That was approved, and Jen. You are the auditor for next month. And Bunny, who is going to be our speaker next month? I thought I would ask Candy Johnson to come in. She is in charge of adult nonfiction. She also buys the downloadable materials and the uh, uh, books on CD. Great. Well, we will look forward from hearing from her. And Lila, it was great having you with us this evening. Thank you so much for your time and participation. And thanks to one quick question before we log off. Yes. Who do I talk to about the audit and when? Just before this meeting? Just before month? this meeting next month, and I'll be happy to help you. It's, you it's, it's really easy. OK, thank you. OK. Is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, I'll make a motion. Denise. Second? Naraj. Okay. All in favor? Thank you very much.